What's going on everybody? John Cannon for JJ DJ Entertainment. Wanting to show you guys a just a real quick overview of the new Show Express 7. Now, you may notice by looking at my screen that I am running the new operating system that's soon to be released, hopefully, from Apple um, OS X Yosemite. I will tell you that I've had multiple crashes with Show Express 7 um, with the new... Uh, the new operating system. So, until the official version of Yosemite is out and Show Express um, gives you the green light that it's compatible, I wouldn't. I would suggest not to um, to upgrade immediately when it does come out. Likewise, with with any new software software release. So let's go ahead and open up Show Express real quick. And there's something from the start that I really wanted to to uh, point out. The software opens, it takes you to your, your default, or your, your last open show. Now, usually we would just have that little uh, black window that just popped up, and we would go to our individual tabs. And I've noticed one thing I've been doing consistently, um, is that I'm so used to opening up a window, closing it out, opening up the editor, closing out editor, and going to live, or... You know, having live open, having to jump in an editor real quick to do something um, to adjust a, a moving fixture, closing out editor, and being back in live. Now, with this, if you're in live and you hit that close button, it shuts the whole software down. Um, so you could literally accidentally, you know, turn off your entire light show. That scares me a little bit. I I wish they would have some sort of. Are you sure you want to close this um, this program? Um, so looking at it from the start, it's a totally new interface. As you can see, you don't have that black window with the options. Pretty much everything is kind of unified into this one screen. And up top is where the individual tabs were on that black starter box. And you have your editor, you have pixels, you have your live and standalone, which is the timeline um, mode of it. So let's go into editor. First editor is where you put all your fixtures. Um, you can create where your normal, your steps would be where you do all your programming and your generator is no longer a pop out window. It is all pretty much built in to the editor area. So. You can add your fixtures directly in here. Now, it, it kind of gives the appearance when you add fixtures. Let me just go ahead and throw in. Um, let's throw in. I don't know. I'm, I'm indecisive on picking. I'm indecisive on a lot of things. Let's go with this. I'm just going to pick this guy. And we're going to add three fixtures. And we're going to patch them. And there you go. So, you have fixtures. Fix, three fixtures. Uh, one through seven being the first. 8 through 14 being the second, and 15 through 21 being the third. Now, by the looks of this, it, it would look as if you could drag around these to fit in your DMX, um, in different DMX channels. Um, that is not the case. Well, I mean, it can, but let me rephrase that. When by doing that, it doesn't reprogram the scenes that you have made. So be careful if you are going to do that because you could throw off everything you've made unless you know exactly the order they went into. What would be nice, and hopefully this is coming down the road, let's say for some reason I no longer have three of the Megapar 38s. Um, and I, I go down to just having one. Um, and in replacement of those, let's say I've, I've bought the Chavez... Let's just go with this guy right here. I can't easily just delete this fixture and then relocate that fixture to that DMX address. Because what's going to happen is if I queue up any scenes that have had that old fixture that was in 15 to I think 21, I believe, um, in there, those DMX address channels are going to be applied to this new fixture we've just added. So a little bit of, you know, kind of a concern. I, you know, I, I would have rather them have kept it at the old, as the old layout where it wasn't movable um, as freely like this. So it doesn't give the wrong impressions 
are, you know, possibly just lead to general confusion. So let me go ahead and just erase all three of these fixtures real quick. And I'll, put some, I'll put a moving head in here so I can show you guys some of the programming um, that I, I like to do. Now, I have the Chave QSpot 260, so let, I'm sure they have a profile in here for them. So let me see what they have, and we're going to go ahead and show you guys just a real simple, simple, simple task. Okay, I don't see the QSpot 260s. Uh, I bet they're under... Looks like discontinued. Okay, maybe I'm totally losing my mind because I don't see what I'm looking for. Let's just go with the Intimidator spots. Um, we're going to do basic. We're going to make this four, four fixtures and we're going to patch them. So we have our four fixtures. Let's go ahead and space these out a little bit visually. Alright, so now we can go into steps immediately from there and we can start programming our shows. Um, or we can go right into the generator and start programming. So let's go ahead and just dive right into the generator. I know you guys have seen, should be pretty familiar with um, creating steps. Nothing really changes from that aspect. We jump into the generator. Let's go ahead and select all of our fixtures. And let's just make this pattern right here where it's it's just a circular movement. Um, now the 3D would normally be... there. I, I, forgot, I can't read... 3D was actually off the main menu. It was, it was on the, the black box. There was a 3 button you hit and you'd be able to see the 3D visualizer. Now you need to go to miscellaneous and 3D view. Um, this will open up your 3D. Let me resize this window for you. And so we're just going to make a quick motion, hit play. This is your 3D um, button. This is your DMX button. And as you can see in the 3D, everything is moving as it should. So normally at this point is where you would hit generate and it would generate this, the, um, that movement into steps that would then be on the, the steps or the editor tab. Um, and you can go and see all the individual um, calculations it had to make to make that generator scene. Now you just save your generator files and those are what you recall in live. So you would save the project um, we will call this circle, and I forget, we'll say 260s. Now when you're, you are in live, let's go ahead and rename this page. A lot of the controls are really the same. It's just a, a really a new UI um, with a bunch of little small features here and there. And hopefully as they are claiming on the, the, the uh, lighting form or lighting controller, um, and as well as what we've kind of seen on the Show Express Facebook group, there are some things that down the road that they can't talk about, go figure, but there are some big things coming down the road as well. So let's just go ahead in here and rename this page. We will call this Movers Q Spots, even though they're not Q Spots. We're, just, we're going to uh, we're going to pretend, and we're going to hit Add Light Scene. Now you're not going to add the individual scene like you normally would because you, you, you wouldn't have that editor view showing all the steps. You're going to add in your generate your generator file. And so from here, we turn on 3D, you'll see your moving heads working and it's running all off a generator file. You can jump back in here and you can make steps for another fixture while that's playing just like you could in the old, old software. Um, but here's a cool thing I, I've, I've found to really like. I can right click on this and go edit. And I can go back in and edit this generator file. Now you may ask why that would be important. Venues change, setups change, um, a lot of different things could change that would, would cause your lights to not work within a certain area that you're working with or do what you're, you originally had intended to do. So you could alter your generator file, resave it, 
think this is the save, yeah. Resave it, and then back here in live, it's now been changed to do the new um the new layout that you have kind of corrected or calibrated or whatever you want to call it. Uh, another real big bonus, you know, feature for me is I I use MIDI mapping for Show Express for pretty much all of our our bigger events other than weddings. And so if we go into button triggers, no, sorry, well, button trigger would be what you um would MIDI, MIDI map with. Um, and while we're in here, it Show Express Seven does have MIDI output now, which is huge because now we can finally see what what shows we have turned on and what shows we don't have turned off. If you have never operated a MIDI board without MIDI lighting and you are literally guessing off your memory and what button you hit to what lights are running and being on and doing whatever, you have never lived because it is a pain in the pain in, pain in the took us. Um, so now we can actually see what lights are on, what, well, technically what lights are enabled by the light on the MIDI pad, which is huge to me. Um, but what I wanted to show you was the scene properties. Here it is. So when you have manual BPM selected, uh, or manual speed, actually, no, sorry, just manual speed. Like I said, I'm still, I'm still working on learning this whole new layout myself. But if you have manual speed selected and you check off this speed slider, now just like on how sometimes you would use the uh, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the the, uh, the fader button icon down here, you can have a speed um, fader. So essentially, now we have the lights as you can see over here moving. We could slow those lights down. Then we could speed those lights up. So now, no longer do you have to make a slow light movement scene, a fast light movement scene, a in-between light movement scene. You can create one scene that that fits a particular motion that you guys like, or a certain fade that you are, you know, a certain speed of a fade, or a certain fade. Sorry, uh, it's been it's been a long long weekend and a long night. So you guys can set up a certain fade of colors that you'd like, and you can control how fast it fades from color to color. Um, so that's a really nice bonus to me. I think that that will definitely come in handy and cut down on the amount of different um, scenes we have for movements. Because we would have a good 15 to 20 different movements for you know one particular event. So now we can cut that down to maybe, you know, 10 or, or, you know, 8. And, you know, something where we don't have a tremendous amount of movements where we're guessing to, okay, this may fit better. We can kind of really start to really focus in our shows a little, little bit more. Um, so that's really what I wanted to cover. I just wanted, I don't want to make this real long in-depth video, but I wanted to show you a couple of things that I liked. Of course, timeline is still there. The standalone, I, I, I guess standalone is a little bit different than the timeline some, some, somehow. I, like I said, I have not dug into this very deep. Um, but I did want to kind of throw something out there to show you guys. I started to play around with pixels a little bit. Um, hopefully I'm going to get my hands on some, some pixel um, enabled fixtures so I can kind of play around with it a little bit more. I have a couple ide ideas that I, I'd like to try to do with um, some pixel mapping. Um, but that's it. I just really want to show you the, uh, the new show express and kind of get the ball moving for me to, uh, start doing some, some more show express videos for you guys. So as always, make sure you guys sign up or actually just request a member or request to join the Facebook group, uh, for show express, show express idea sharing. Um, and leave your comments below what you guys want to see, what you guys want to see me do videos on for you so leave your comments below if you're on youtube hit that like button for me and until the next video guys keep doing what you do talk to you guys soon see ya